Hello YouTube! I am Pinstar, and this is Cities Skyline Strategy and Tactics, a special zone build quick tip! Um, so, in um, our last quick tip video uh, regarding zone builds was for what I call the Industrial Coffee Filter Zone. A way to split up your traffic um, and build yourself a good, healthy industrial zone at the beginning of the game. Uh, today, I bring you a new zone build, the Weeping Willow Zone. Now, what is the Weeping Willow Zone? What can it do for you? What does it look like? Well, here's uh, just one example. It's an extremely versatile zone. Here's an example of a residential Weeping Willow Zone, fully developed. A uh, commercial uh, Weeping Willow Zone, fully developed. Another residential one over here. And even an industrial one. And you know what? We even got room for ourselves in office park slash farm slash whatever the heck you want. Weeping Willow Zone. This thing is versatile and it's easy to plug into your transportation network. As, as you can see here, all you have to do is plant them in a highway. If you've got... A, if you've got two sections of highway, one going one way, one going another, you can plug in a Weeping Willow Zone. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. So, let me show you how to build them. Okay, so, as uh, mentioned before, your uh, Weeping Willow Zone can, uh, uh, all you need is a pair of highways uh, going here. You can obviously uh, do it by building your own highways, or you could just plug it into an existing highway. So just for uh, simplicity's sake here, we're going to plug it into an existing highway here. Um, eh, let's do it right here. Now, which side of the highway you plug it into doesn't matter. It works on both sides. So I'm going to arbitrarily decide to do it on this side. Why not? Okay, so uh, phase one is going to be laying down your roads. So what you want to do is go ahead and grab your road tool here. We're going to take the... Uh, going to take the two-lane one-way road um, and plant it where basically wherever you want to put the uh, think, think of the weeping willow zone as well a tree and at this point we're we're uh, we're planting the trunk here so wherever you want the base of the zone to be uh, pick that on your highway here so we're going to do it here so perpendicular to the highway you want to pull this out four lengths and what I mean by length see these little notches right here that's one up here that's two we want four notches four lengths worth like so and make sure to draw it from here to here uh, because we want the one-way road to be going out this direction so from the top here you want to grab it and again perpendicular to the road pull it out two lengths to the right and then also two lengths to the left like so now switch to your curved road piece here. Grab one of the sides here, pull it out to a third length right here, click once, and then pull it down to one length down below and click again. That will give yourself that will give you a nice clean, simple uh, 90 degree turn. Um, do the same for the other side. Like so. All right, go ahead and switch yourself back to the straight road tool. Um, now on this side, we're going to drag it down straight down to the highway and link it right back up. This should give you a nice straight road here uh, without any jaggedness in the zoning uh, plots here. Um, now on this side here, we're going to do the same exact thing, but we're not going to leave this like this because the way this zone works is traffic coming down the highway will enter the zone through the trunk. If they want to uh, leave again and want to go back on the highway in the same direction, um, they just take this right path here and head on this way. But people uh, leaving the zone need to be able to leave uh, the highway in the other direction. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to demolish that. Go back to the one-way tool here going to hit my page up button to lift it up one length, stop it right before the highway, plant it, uh, cross the highway. You want to go maybe one more length beyond the normal highway here just to give you a little wiggle room. Plant that. Switch over to your curve tool like so. Do maybe a 45 degree angle here. Hit the page down button to tell it to go down and then uh, plug it back into the highway like so. And so there we have a nice, uh, clean road connection here. Um, maybe not so clean looking, but it's functional. 
Now, for the innards of the uh, zone here, what we're, we're going to want to do is go ahead and grab the two-lane road tool, so not the one-way anymore. We're going to start here at the bottom, and what we want is... Um, oh, yeah, we also want to make sure we go back to our straight-line tool here. Uh, is make sure you want uh, all you want the the zone down there at the bottom so that the four four uh, uh, square lengths uh, touch against the highway down there so there's very little uh, wasted space down there and you want to pull this out until the the highlighted reaches the back line of the zones from the one-way road like so then do the same thing in the other direction just pull it out until it's touching the zones there like so now, going up the further in the spine here, you want to pull it up. Now, you want, the, see that little, that one little tile space in between the two roads there? You want that. You want it so that this little space right here is, is without zoning here. That is by design. And do the same on the other side. Now, one more up here. And again, we're going to be observing the one, uh, one tile uh, spacing thing. Uh, on either side of this, like so, and like so. More on why we're leaving little spaces there in a moment. Now the last thing you're going to do for your road network here um, is I'm going to switch over to the Highway tab, click the Highway Ramp tab, then on the little junction where, where this uh, road uh, turns into a ramp, Pull it and connect it to the end of that line right there. This is what I call a recycle road. If a uh, car is coming and leaving the zone in this direction, or say they have to service the zone over here, but they don't, they're not ready to leave the zone entirely, they can bail out on this recycle road and go back somewhere else in the zone rather than being forced into the opposite direction of the highway. Okay, so that is uh, part one for... Uh, uh, drawing the road structure. Step two uh, is the zone, is the uh, services. So one of the benefits of the uh, Weeping Willow zone here is that you get very efficient use out of some basic zones, very good coverage, I should say. So by clicking here, um, you can build your basics here, and if you're doing a um, uh, a residential, a commercial, or an office uh, slated district, you're going to want uh, all of these. Actually, even industrial wants these, uh, even if they don't necessarily use them entirely. Um, so we're going to go ahead and build. You uh, you only need the smallest of each type, so a medical clinic down here. You want it here at the base of the tree. See how it covers the whole zone? Yeah, it gets a little gray towards the edge over here. But as far as coverage is concerned, it still reaches there without a problem. Um, go over here to fire and do the same as well. Go over here, small police station. Again, you want to make sure it's facing that bottom road so that that bottom road gets coverage. Uh, and then lastly, um, if you've unlocked them, crematoriums are awesome. Even if you're, even if this is a, uh, a residential zone, and even though it looks like it has smokestacks, it doesn't produce pollution or, or noise pollution. So you can stick it right here and that will cover your whole zone for death care. Um, so that will cover all of your basic services there. Now the other thing, if you are doing a residential, a commercial, or an office district, your, uh, your zones are going to want some decorations. And a great way to do decorations is, um, is the Japanese garden. The Japanese garden works really, really well with uh, the Weeping Willow Zone, and actually it's kind of fitting, I suppose. Uh, so what you want to do is, um, in the middle section on the bottom row here, what you want to do is you want to go uh, eight squares from the spine here. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, th one, five, six, seven, eight. So eight squares from the spine, place it right down here, like so. You'll notice that that covers all of the zones uh, on this half of the zone. Do the exact same thing with another Japanese garden on here. So that's four, five, six, seven, eight zones here. Oops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Covers all but that one tile over there. So yeah, we eight and eight. 
that works out nicely. That way, all the zones, uh, all the tiles in this zone are covered by at least one Japanese garden, and a lot of the lucky ones here in the middle get double, uh, get double teamed for extra high strength coverage. Step two in building your zone here is going to be uh, threading it with skyways. Uh, so skyways are just another name I give pedestrian paths, and pedestrian paths are really freaking useful. Uh, useful to the point where this zone is going to have just as many pedestrian paths as it will regular roads. Um, so to start, uh, start out your little pedestrian path network here, uh, go ahead and select your pedestrian path tool, hit the page up button so you're starting at an elevation, and then in these little, in these little space gaps that we created um, in our zones here, build a path that, along them there. Now we're going to keep it elevated and keep it crossing over this central spine here. And yes, we're going to step on a couple of tiles here. That's fine. While you're drawing this, you want to make sure that this um, this only occupies one line of zones. You don't want it spilling over into these and starting to step on zone tiles there. That makes the things inefficient. And then when you reach the end here, just hit the page down and have it hook up to the end of the road here. And do the same with this side as well. And rinse and repeat with, um, again, making sure that you're on the upper scale here with the, uh, the, the other uh, junctions here. Okay, so that's uh, our first part of our things. Now, another uh, part of our networking here is these little road nubs right, right here are really close to these. And since sidewalks count as their own pedestrian paths here, we can um, let our pedestrians who are, happen to be walking on these roads get access to the outer loop with by using only three spaces here. Um, so very easy to do that. Just do a ground level uh, pedestrian path along here. Uh, we don't need to do it with this road because the our little bailout road here has its own little walkways over there. But for for the others, it is a worthy sacrifice of those three tiles. Okay, so we've got the uh, left to the right taken care of here, but we still have more of our network to draw. So on the uh, on the opposite side of the Japanese garden from the spine is where we're going to be going down and up and down. So go ahead and take that tile right there and connect uh, connect up your uh, lengths right here. Again, making sure you're only stepping on one tile wide worth of stuff. If it isn't, uh, delete it and, and uh, try that in zone again. You do not want to lose more than one tile lengths worth here. Do the exact same thing on this side. Oop. And sometimes you will stomp on your uh, zones there. Just rebuild them, reconnect them. Sometimes it's a little bit of trial and error, um, but eventually it will it will let you do it. Like so. And then these up here are going to uh, cross over this thing and into the middle of the highway, into this space over here. Pull them down here like so, and then go ahead and connect these two up to each other. More on what the importance of this is later. Okay, now this is all well and good, but we still don't really have a lot of ways for people in this zone to, well, really get onto this zone, uh, into this little skyway here. So we're going to be drawing some more ramps. So these down here at the end, go ahead and uh, have them go down and, and link up with the roads over here, like so. Um, and we still need a couple other ways for people to get onto the whole network by itself. So what we're going to do is on here, on the other side of the Japanese garden, we're going to have these little up-down uh, zones like so. Draw from the road up here and link up to here. And then from up here, back on down. Actually, you don't really need the, at the top part of this. We don't really need that because that one's so close by. And then do the same on this side, same on this side, and then over on the lower rung, do it, uh, do the same sort of connecting on here, like so, like so. Aha, see, now I did that on, on purpose. See how I made it over to the left or to the right a little bit too much and it used up and it made uh, a, a line of zones disappear. If you see that happen, you, you put it in the wrong place, just 
delete it and try again. Much better. See, now we retain use of these zones here, and now we can get a properly sized 4x4 four four building over here. And do the same on this side. Beautiful. Oh, and one more, uh, one more up here. No, that looks a little bit too far over. Oops. Like so. All right, and that concludes part two. Our skyways are complete. Actually, no, no, uh, that's a lie. One more critical set of, uh, of skyways, and uh, it's right here in the middle. What you want to do is, from the ground level, um, start start a sky uh, start a path at the ground level, uh, draw it backwards like so, and do a page up, and then just mouse over so that it curls over into the thing until it turns blue, and make that like so. Do the exact same thing, but going in the opposite direction on the other side. Basically as narrow as you can get away with. Perfect. Beautiful. Wonderful. Excellent. Now we are done with our skyways. Okay, our next uh, thing is uh, mass transit. And how we are going to be handling mass transit depends on the flavor of zone that we're going to do. But regardless of the flavor of zone that you're going to do, the, the number one mass transit that really, really works well with the Weeping Willow zone is a metro line. Weeping Willow is perfect for a metro line. And yes, I know it makes noise pollution, even if you have a, a residential uh, weeping willow, use it. Use it. It's it's it benefit outweighs the uh, noise pollution cost. Now, where are you going to put this? You want to put it on the central trunk, right here in the middle, right next to these two little curvy uh, skyway things here. By doing that, basically the entire zone, if it so chooses to, can walk to and from your metro line. Then plug your metro line into the rest of your city, and uh, now people can get to and from your Weeping Willow Zone without even touching the highway if they uh, if they want to go that direction. Now, if you are doing a commercial-flavored Weeping Willow Zone, I would highly, highly recommend um, getting yourself a uh, train station and sticking it up here. Uh, this will not only allow people to... Uh, uh, come come and go from your uh, from your zone from uh, via the uh, railways uh, but it will also provide an avenue for tourists to enter your city and the one the one area that wants tourists the most is a commercial center so a commercial weeping willow zone would highly benefit from a train station i wouldn't recommend it for a residential flavored weeping willow because the noise pollution on this beast does not more than outweigh the benefit um, it provides so i would skip it for your residentials if you're doing an industrial flavored weeping willow zone uh, you're going to want a cargo terminal on on this side as well um, and you could do a cargo on one side and, and a passenger on the other. That would work as well. Uh, also, if your Weeping Willow just happens to be built up against a, uh, a river, you could substitute those with um, uh, uh, cargo harbors and regular harbors, respectively. Now, if you're doing a residential-flavored uh, Weeping Willow, um, if the entire zone is residential, what you'll need to cover it properly is two elementary schools, a high school, and um, possibly a uh, university if there's not one else somewhere else in your city already. Um, so as far as the placement for these, whereas normal services like to be put down here at the bottom of the trunk, the schools like to be at the very top up here in order to provide coverage to all the, the core of the zone. Even though it doesn't look like it reaches to the outer branches, it still does. I mean, kids walk to school and they have a million different ways to get there. So even though the, the lines don't look like they cover it properly, it, it'll cover the whole zone. So we're gonna build our two elementary schools here, like so. And we can go ahead and uh, slap our high school down here. Uh, and like I said, if there's a university elsewhere in the city and it's decently close enough, you uh, you don't need to bother with it. Or if this is going to be your uh, first university zone, you can find it a home right up here or so.
it's hard to find a home with it inside because you're going to be stomping on the uh, stomping on the skyways. Uh, also, in terms of mass transit, um, if you have not invested in a metro system yet, uh, but you do have buses, a bus line um, in in the approximate area of where our metro station is is a fantastic. Uh, 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 placement of it as well. In fact, you can supplement your metro system with your bus system um, there as well. I would not recommend doing that for your industrial zone. There's going to be enough truck traffic flowing around your zone that adding buses into the mix with is just not going to help things. And then finally, once your uh, your zone is all done, go ahead and zone it up however you want. Now, you can zone it low density if you want, but you know what? This zone is built to handle high density 100% high density. So uh, if you want to maximize the effectiveness of your services here, go ahead and uh, high density it up all over the place. Just boom, 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 boom. In fact, actually, it'd probably be easier just to do a big wah, like so. And voila, we have ourselves a residential flavored uh, uh, weeping willow zone. Now, the last uh, finishing touches that you can do here is go ahead, go back to your decoration tool here. Uh, and this is more specifically for residential weeping willows. Uh, first off, if your, um, if your highway is not the sound barrier flavor, do yourself and your citizens a, f a favor and upgrade it to the sound barrier flavor. It is worth it uh, to help with the noise pollution. And further help reduce the noise pollution for living right next to the highway. Um, you'll notice that the zones have a little tiny space down here along the bottom. Go ahead and plant a row of trees right down here at the bottom. This will pretty much fully net, uh, mitigate the, uh, the negative effects of noise pollution, even for your residential zones that happen to be along this line here right along the bottom. They're not going to scream at you for, for noise pollution too badly um, uh, due to the highway. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is that. Now, the main benefits of, of this zone here are several. First off, by using nothing but two-lane roads, both one-way and bi-directional, we have zero traffic lights. No traffic lights coming in from the highway, no traffic lights um, at any of these intersections, no traffic lights leaving the highway in either direction, so no stop-and-go traffic, no horrible backups and pile-ups and, and whatnot. Um, by utilizing this much coverage for your Skyway, you encourage citizens to walk rather than take a vehicle. Um, and by having your metro here, even if they need to travel long distances, they are happy to, they're more, more likely to walk and enter the metro than they are to hop in a car and clog up your roads. Um, and lastly, like I said, this is versatile. Anywhere you have this, you can plug in another one. You could plug in another one facing the opposite direction. The only thing that get, kind of gets in the way, you might want to space them out, is these little connector roads. But also notice that you don't need a big flying spaghetti monster sh shaped uh, uh, interchange to uh, have this zone work with the rest of your transportation network. It just works naturally as sort of a natural extension between point A and point B. Um, so, um, and last but not least, Remember how I told you that you uh, would want to build your Skyway down here? Well, within the zone, people wouldn't really have a reason to use this part of the Skyway. But imagine if the rest of your city was, oh, say, over here. If you were to paint this Skyway and connect it up with the rest of your main city here, your residents from your Weeping Willow Zone could now walk to another part of your city. They could walk across the highway and get to another part of your city, therefore saving even more trips uh, and even more cars on the road. And that's how you can maintain a zone this size at all high density, even though all the roads here are just two of the two lane variety. So I hope uh, this zone serves you as well as it has me. Look for it uh, put into practical use in an upcoming episode of my strategy and tactics series. Um, so if you like this video and you want to see more like it, go ahead and hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and leave me a comment, good, bad, or indifferent. Your feedback is always welcome. And if you have any questions about the implementation of this zone, uh, go ahead and le let, uh, let me know there. 
Oh, one last tip. Almost forgot. Um, if you're doing it for any uh, zones that care about land value, upgrade your roads to the tree line variety. They'll like that. It, the zone uh, retains its functionality just as well, but now it's pretty, and now you're, uh, you're get, you'll get more land value upgrades out of the out of the deal here. So uh, make that investment for pretty much any type other than industrial. Industrial doesn't care. Um, so until next time, this has been Pinstar signing out. See ya.